Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the Wilcoxon signed rank test. We are essentially talking about the test which involves paired samples. So this is a non-parametric equivalent of the paired t-test. It would be applicable in cases when we do not satisfy the assumption of normality. The Wilcoxon signed rank test tries to compare the dependent samples. So essentially we have paired observations, just like the before and after observations we discussed about paired two sample t-test. Then what are the specific assumptions in case of Wilcoxon signed rank test? A couple of assumptions are common. For example, the sample should have been collected randomly. Within each group in each sample, we expect independence, but the samples itself are before and after. And another assumption which is unique here is that the distribution of differences is supposed to be symmetric. Now, because of this very assumption, we are able to call this as a test of median because symmetry around the differences makes it a test of median. Let's dive into a problem and try to understand this a little better and we'll do a complete walkthrough. An insurance company experiments with a new sales offer. To evaluate the effectiveness of new offer, the company collects data on the sales performance of a sample of its team members before and after the implementation of the offer. The goal is to determine whether the new sales offer has a significantly different sales performance of the team members compared to the old sales offer. Based on the data provided, conduct a test at 5% level of significance. So if you've read the problem carefully, it clearly indicates there are two samples. We seem to have a collection of a before and after, which means all the observations will be paired and the samples cannot be of unequal sizes. Let's just take a note of what all information is provided to us. So we know the level of significance, which is 5%. Let's state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis would be that the median sales before are same as the median sales after. But the alternative hypothesis would be that they are not equal. We were not given any directional alternative hypothesis in this case. All we have to check is whether the sales before and after, when it comes to their median, they are same or not. So every test we have seen so far has always had a test statistic. In case of the Wilcoxon signed rank test too, we have a test statistic, which for a two-tailed test is calculated as the minimum of T positive and T negative, where T positive is the sum of ranks of positive differences and T negative is the sum of ranks of the negative differences. While we're working on a problem that is a two-tailed problem, it'll be nice to know how the hypothesis statement would be written if the alternate hypothesis was directional. It had a less than or a greater than kind of a sign. So let us understand how T positive and T negative would behave against each other if we have these kind of hypotheses as our alternative choices. So first of all, if T negative is greater than T positive, what does it mean? You have a dominance of negative differences. And differences are being obtained using what? You're subtracting the after value from the before value. And there, if you have a dominance of negative differences, it indicates an overall increase in the after data. When would this difference be negative? It would be negative when before is less than after. And you're saying such differences dominate the positive differences. A positive difference would appear when the sales before is reported greater than the sales after. But we are saying there is a dominance of negative. So it indicates an overall increase in the after data. And therefore, the test statistic in this case will be T positive. You will compare it with the critical value. If it is less than or equal to the critical value, you will reject the null hypothesis. Else, you will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's look at the second possibility. When T negative is less than T positive, T negative is representing a total of those differences where the after value was greater than the before value. But we are saying, in this case, there is a dominance of T positive. T positive represents those values where the before sales were greater than the after sales. And we are saying this is what is dominating. So intuitively, this applies that there is an overall decrease in the after sample. In this case, the critical statistic will be T minus and we'll compare it with W critical with the same decision rule. If it's less than or equal to W critical, we will reject the null hypothesis. If it is greater, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now let's move back to our problem and start solving it in a step-by-step -step way. Notice that we are solving a two-tailed problem right now, but just wanted to cover the other possibilities as well so that when you get a different question, you're still able to solve it. Okay, so... The first step is that we have to compute the difference between the paired observations. L let's have a look at the data and understand how can we do that. 
All right, so here's the data. We have the sales in thousands of dollars as per the old offer, and we have sales in thousands of dollars as per the new offer. And each row here, or each pair observation, basically is the before and after performance of a sales team member. So let's calculate the difference, old offer, and from it, we subtract the new offer here. We're just looking at the difference. So these are the values that we get. Let's understand the next step. Step two says, discard the observations which have zero difference. Consider only the positive and negative values. Let's do this. So we have only one scenario here where we have no change at all between old and new. It's all the same. We have to discard this. Once that's done, we have one observation less, but all the values that we have are either positive or negative. No zeros. Step three says, consider only the absolute values of differences and rank them. For ties, assign them an average rank. So first of all, we have to convert these values to absolute values. We can do this in Excel with the help of the function called ABS or absolute. This would negate the sign for the time being. Now we have to do a ranking of these. Now it will be better if we are able to sort them in an order and then we can do the ranking. So now I've sorted them in an ascending order and I can keep on doing the ranking. So the smallest value gets a rank one, then we get rank two, then we get rank three. Notice it was written that in case of ties, assign an average rank. So otherwise the rank for this value would have been four and this would have been five. But we have to assign an average. So what is the average of these two values? Four plus five is nine. And if you divide by two, that will be 4.5. So we have to give an average rank here. Now for the next value, you have to take into consideration how many ranks you've already given and you have to continue from there. So we've already ranked five observations. This value would be given the rank of six. This value would be given a rank of seven. Once again, we have a tie. At what places? Eighth and ninth place. So the average of eight plus nine would again be 8.5. We have to give the same rank at both the places. Once again, how many values have we ranked so far? We've already ranked nine values. So this would be 10 and this would be 11. Notice that we originally started with 12 observations. This is after deleting the row, which had a zero difference, we are left with 11 paired differences. So now we have to do a total of negative ranks and positive ranks. Before that, we need to get those values here so that we can add them up and get a sum total. How do we do this? We can apply an Excel formula, which is if, the actual difference is less than zero. Then we want to capture its rank here, else we'll leave it blank. So now notice wherever the actual difference was negative, we seem to have got a value, right? Likewise, we need to do this for the positive differences. Once again, I'm calling the same if formula and which value are we referring to? We are going to refer to the difference value only, but this time we'll say if the value is greater than zero, then we want to retain its rank, else we want to leave it blank, which means nothing will be updated. So in this case, since the value was negative, we didn't get anything. But you can notice for all other places where we had a positive difference, we have got a rank value. All we need to do now is a sum of positive and negative ranks. So this is a sum of negative ranks, and we can copy this formula here. So this is a sum of positive ranks. Now we know this is our T negative, and this is our T positive. So here we've already done step four, which says add the ranks of positive differences and negative difference to obtain T positive and T negative respectively. Now all we need to do is that we need to find the minimum of the two because that is our test statistic W. And of course, the minimum amongst these two values is 26.5. So 26.5 is the test statistic W. Now we need to find a W critical or a critical value to compare the test statistic with, and then we will have to apply a decision rule. So where do we get the W critical from? We'll have to look at the Wilcoxon sign rank table for that. We are here looking at the Wilcoxon sign rank test table. Now W critical here depends on the number of observations, but keep this in mind, it is not the original number of observations that you started with. It is after you've discarded the differences which were zero. So in our case, this would be the value 11 that we'll be looking at now, because we had 11 meaningful differences, positives or negatives, we will take that as the value of n. And now we have to check what is the level of significance that we are referring to. In this case, this is the critical value. The critical value is 10 and the test statistic is 26.5. Now we need to look at the decision rule. If the calculated W statistic is less than or equal to the critical value, we reject. This is not the case that we have. 
Instead, we have the second case. If the calculated W statistic is greater than the critical value, 26.5 is greater than 11, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, with 95% confidence, we conclude that the new offer doesn't seem to have brought about a change in the median value of sales compared to the old offer. Let's see how do we quickly solve the same problem in Python. All right, so we are here in Python and here we are going to call the libraries that will be needing to perform this test. We are calling pandas to be able to read our data and we are calling scipy stats to be able to use the specific class meant for Wilcoxon test. Let's run this. And in the next line of code, we are just reading the data, which I showed you. This is stored as a data frame object. We've given it a name. Now we are calling Wilcoxon where we are passing the columns as is. So the old offer and the new offer. And what is the nature of the alternative hypothesis? It was a two-tailed test. So we are just executing it now. And you can see the test statistic is same, which is 26.5 as we manually computed. And the p-value in this case, you can see is 0.57. Now, of course, if you compare this with 0.05, this is much greater. So going by the common p-value decision rule, once again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. For small samples, this is the way you would approach solving a problem involving paired observations, which do not follow normality. With large sample sizes, we can approximate this distribution to a normal distribution as well. With a mean as n multiplied by n plus one by four, this n will be calculated after discarding the cases where there is no difference in the before and after. So this is the value of n, you can put it here, calculate the mean, you can calculate the standard deviation using this. As of now, we don't have to worry about deriving these formulae, but you get the idea. In case of large samples, there is an approximation to normal distribution that is possible. Once you calculate your test statistic, you can always compare it with the critical values obtained from the Z table. Pretty much the way we did for one sample Z test or other parametric tests. So hope this gives you clarity on the Wilcoxon's signed rank test. Thank you.